So this is my ISU presentation and it is on the American-Canadian relationship and there's a picture of the two flags combined. So there are many known facts about this relationship. Number one, many people know that we have the longest undefended border between two nations in the world. The second thing people know is that Pierre Trudeau described the relationship as sleeping with an elephant. And another thing they know is that the two nations are very much connected economically, which means that one country's economic activity affects the other one. And since this is history class, I thought that if we look at the history of this relationship, it will give us a better understanding of where we are today. So when I looked at the history, I found five main stages. The first stage was from 1770 to 1867. The second stage was from 1867 to 1920. The third stage was from 1956 to 1987. And the fourth stage was from 1987 to 2009. And the fifth and last stage was from 2009 to today. So the first stage, which was from 1770 to 1867, was the beginnings. In 1770, neither country existed. They were both British colonies. And there it is, both were colonies of the British Empire. So, in 1776, America declared itself free, starting the Revolutionary War, which they would eventually win in 1781, becoming an independent nation, and George Washington became the first president. And there's a picture of the American flag as it is today. So, Canada at the time was split into Upper and Lower Canada. It was still a British colony. And the first interaction between the two nations were that loyalists, who were people loyal to the British crown, fled to America, fled America, and came to Canada. And the relationship was not a good one at this time. So the first major conflict between these two nations was the War of 1812. This was when America attacked the British colonies of Canada in 1812. So Britain was involved in the Napoleonic Wars in Europe, which meant that they were fighting Napoleon, and the Americans knew that they couldn't send troops to help the Canadians. So President James Madison thought that he could take Canada easily, and he believed in Manifest Destiny, which was the idea that the United States was destined to rule all of North America. And what he had not anticipated was that the Canadians and natives fought back, and there were many battles along the border of Canada and America. The war ended when Britain beat Napoleon and sent troops to Canada, so they won the war in Europe, and they came and took out the American invasion, and the Treaty of Ghent in 1814 officially ended the war. William Leon Mackenzie's rebellion of 1837 was against the British so that Canada would become a nation just like America. And this was based off the American Revolution. William Leon Mackenzie wanted to start this rebellion because he wanted Canada to have a revolution much like America. And so in 1867, Canada was still a British colony, but then Canada was mad at Britain for supporting the South in the American Civil War from 1861 to 1865, and the British hadn't actually sent troops, but it was the common feeling that Britain supported the South side, which was the slave side in the American Civil War, and so in 1867, on July the 1st, Confederation happened, which was when, be when Canada became its own nation. And Britain was in favor of it because it kind of wanted this colony off its hand. And the Reciprocity Treaty of 1854 made free trade with America. And this was one of the reasons for Confederation. So Sir John A. Macdonald became the first Prime Minister of Canada. And Canada was still a dominion of Britain. It just wasn't a colony. And there's the Canadian flag as it is today. So the second stage was from 1867 to 1950. And 
America and Canada were both independent countries at this time. Um, they started trading more and more with one another. And it was actually an American company that invested in the building of the Transcontinental Railway, which was built by Sir John A. Macdonald. So two treaties set the border between the two nations. The first was the Ashburton-Webster Treaty of 1867, which set things in the Northeast. And the second one was the Oregon Treaty of 1871, which made the border west of the Rockies. And there's a picture of the border between Canada and America as it is today. So the friendship grew in this time. So the big dispute in the second stage was the Alaskan Panhandle dispute. And this was a big problem in 1903. It was a dispute over the border between Alaska and Canada because the Americans had bought Alaska and Canada owned Rupert's land. So six men sorted it out. There were three Americans, two Canadians, and one British man. In the end, both sides compromised. And there's a picture as it is today. As you see, the black is the where it is, and the blue is the American claim, and the red is the Canadian claim. And so after this, Canada realized that it wanted to sort things out in the future without British help because the British man made the Canadians compromise quite a lot. And the relationship between the two nations after this kept getting better and better. So at the beginning of World War I, Canada entered the war as its own nation. It was still a dominion of Britain, but it entered as its own nation in 1914. America joined in 1917 on the Entente side, which was the side that the Canadians were on. There is the Canadian coat of arms, and there is the American coat of arms. So at this time, American-Canadian trade became more than what Canada did with Britain, and this was a big step because before this, Canada had had its biggest trade partner as Britain, but after this point, its biggest trade partner would be America. And they realized that they were both democracies, the American culture crept into Canada, and this was seen through pop culture such as television. And they intermingled at the time. So Canada started drifting away from Britain more and more, which meant they kept started going more to America. And in 1938, President Roosevelt promised that if Canada was attacked, the Americans would help, and this was a big step forward in the relationship. NORAD was created between the two in 1958, and this was basically, if they were attacked, they would join air forces. So the third stage was from 1956 to 1987, and this was a bad stage in the relationship. So a debate in 1956 started this off. It was the Suez Crisis, which showed that Canadians were scared of America. So the Suez Crisis was basically when in Egypt there was a crisis over a canal and America was on one side and Britain was on the other, and the Canadians acted as mediators in this. And many Canadians, politicians, showed that they would rather go with Britain and leave America behind. So Prime Minister John Diefenbaker and President John F. Kennedy didn't like each other. And as you see in the top right corner, you can see them. They didn't like each other and they didn't get along. So Diefenbaker hesitated to back Kennedy on the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis. And this was a big thing because before this, the two nations had been allied and had helped each other. But Diefenbaker and Kennedy didn't get along, so in 1962, he didn't support him. And when Diefenbaker lost the election in 1963, he accused the Americans of his loss. With the new liberal government getting in, people thought that things would get better. Turns out things didn't get better with Pearson or Trudeau. Because in 1965, the Americans requested Canadian support in the Vietnam War. And 
Prime Minister Lester Pearson did not send a, as many troops as the Americans had wanted, and the Americans got mad at him for this. The tension grew when in 1967 the Canadians reduced the amount of oil they traded with the Americans, and this was a big thing because they were America's biggest trade partner, and trade went down. And when Pierre Trudeau got in, and he didn't see eye to eye with Ronald Reagan, we knew things, or they knew things were going bad. So, Trudeau openly bad-talked the Americans, and especially in their foreign affairs. Pierre Trudeau described the relationship as sleeping with an elephant, and he said this because he wanted to move away from America because he didn't like them, but he knew if he seriously offended the Americans, they could crush him easily. And here's a picture of the American elephant. So the fourth stage was from 1987 to 2009, and this was a good stage in the, the relationship. When the conservative government got in, things started to get better. They negotiated and made a new NAFTA agreement. This agreement now included Mexico in the free trade, and things were going well. 80% of all Canadian exports went to America, and in return, 70% of all American exports went to Canada. And Bush became the new president of the United States. And there is the NAFTA symbol. So the big problem in this fourth stage was the terrorist crisis. And this was when, on September 11, 2001, terrorists blew up the Twin Towers. So the Canadians sent troops and people to help the Americans in this time of crisis. The war in Afghanistan was already going on, and this was fought against terrorists. But in 2003, the Americans wanted to extend the attacking to Iraq. The Canadians refused to help America and extend the campaign to Iraq because they just stayed in Afghanistan, and Americans got really mad about this. And Canadians didn't support America in the ballistic missile defense plan in 2005, which made them even more mad. And the Americans were not, it wasn't seen as mad, but more frustrated with the Canadians at this point. So the fifth stage was from 2009 to today. And in 2009, Barack Obama became the president, and Stephen Harper soon took power in Canada. Things got better and the relationship flourished. They negotiated the new Keystone Pipeline Agreement, which made it so that all the oil that was shipped out of Canada went directly to the United States. And there's a picture of President Obama and Prime Minister Harper. So today, there's over $1.8 billion in trade every day. 38,000 people cross the border every day. The cultures intertwine everywhere. All economic activity affects both nations. So whatever the nations do economically, it affects the other one. And today we have Trudeau and Trump. And I don't know how this will go, but looking back at history, I believe that things will get better and better, even though people think they'll go downhill. We've had our ups and downs, but I still believe that this is the best relationship between two countries in the world. And a quote from Barack Obama, No two nations match up more closely together or are woven together more deeply, economically, culturally, than the United States and Canada. And so here's a short video summary of the relationship that you can watch the link for. This is not mine, so it's somebody else, but I think it really does a good summary. And here's my bibliography.